G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, today we're going to do another welder review. I was uh, waiting off on something else and it was out of stock, so I thought I love welders, so let's do another welder review. Let's get something a bit special, a bit different. This is the smallest physical welder, physical sized welder that Banggood sell. So, how small is it? Well, they reckon it's pretty damn small. So, let's unwrap it. Zojan. Wow. Let's undo this and see what we get. So, here we have Zojan, the power of leader. That's the little unit there. It's supposed to be the smallest one they make. Uh, 200 or 250 MMA, where MMA is stick welder, and uh, these are inverters. I ticked the 250, so it's the 251. Now, being good, uh, specifications are not always 100% correct. In this case, they say in the, uh, the web blog, 20 to 250 amp, but the usable range is 10 to 200. So how can that be? I mean, if it's... Um, usable 10 to 200, how can it be 20 to 250? I mean, it doesn't make much sense, does it? So, and the same thing with the duty cycle, you can't really be sure on what the duty cycle is all about until you actually look at the specification on the bottom of the unit. Here they say 160 amp with a, a presumably 60% duty cycle, but I've found that quite often the 60% duty cycle on these, and all these have pretty good duty cycle, you find that's generally at peak, which is in this case 250 or 200. So until we look at the label on the bottom of the unit, we can't be sure what this really means. Okay, let's open it up, take it out, see what's in here. Uh huh. So you get some dense connectors. All the units these days have dense shielded connectors, which is a good thing. It's safer for sure. And there's a Chinesey looking. Uh, instruction book. I suspect there's not going to be much English in there, but I could be wrong. Now all these units have got uh, IGBT um, fast switching transistors. This is what this means. Uh, it's just a, a high speed transistor that they use for, for welders these days and they get good performance out of it. So let's take it out and see what... Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> this is tiny, all right. This certainly is tiny. Okay. No plug on this one, but that's okay. And the beauty of this is it's got an earth wire. A ground, I presume that Chinese says ground. Some welders you buy, including some from Banggood, do not have an earth uh, on them to the to ground the chassis, which is a bad thing. Um, things go catastrophically wrong. Um, yeah, you could get zapped or even fed back through the through the earth uh, through the ground lead. So if you buy a welder, always get one that's got a grounded case. Every welder I've ever used has had grounded uh, cases. It's a lot safer. Okay, let's take this one there. Oh, it looks pretty neat. Wow, the Zojan looks very, very nice. So, what have we got? It's got a carry strap. The other one I, I reviewed, the Use World, which I'll uh, compare this against, has got a handle. Gee, that's tiny, isn't it? I mean, that's amazing. That is bloody amazing. Yeah, it looks nicely made. Yeah, so that's the back. So you've got the usual fan forced uh, air vent. Mm. Nice strong switch. All metal on the back. And the front is some sort of cast plastic. That's metal. That's metal, but then I think this grill is plastic. 
Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll get a magnet. Steel. Yep, steel. Plastic. So that's a plastic grill, but the rest is all metal. And of course, the case is metal as well. Yeah, it looks neat. Very neat. So. Gloves. Mm, no, no sticker on the bottom to tell us what it's got. No, it's on the top. Okay, everything's on the top on this one. So, what's it say? What does it say? It says. Okay. It says 60% duty cycle at 125 amps output or 100% duty cycle at 96.8 amps output. So this is not, this hasn't got as high a duty cycle as the used well that I uh, reviewed earlier. Now this is 220 volt, 50 or 60 hertz uh, machine. And good too, have a couple of 110, 220 units that uh, are a lot more expensive, but um, all the small ones like this are, are 220. Right, now to put this duty cycle into perspective, this has got 60% duty cycle at 125 amp. Pretty good. It's got 100% duty cycle at 96 amp. Now in comparison with the used well, the usual at 60% duty cycle is at its maximum output, 250 amps. The 100% duty cycle is at 195 amps. Now, as this thing is capable of 250 amps, that means the, the duty cycle on this is going to be down around 30% at 250 amps. So that's way lower that's way lower than the used wheel so the used wheel is a lot more heavy duty machine than this one but um, that's the price you pay for having a small unit so 125 amps that's 60 percent is what you'd be welding at with uh, 2.5 mil rod so a 3.2 mil rod, which will be pulling 160 to 70 amp. It's going to knock that duty cycle back. So this will be good with 2.5s. With 3.2s, it may warm up a bit. Anyway, we'll try it out and see how she goes. But definitely the used world is a much better unit uh, electronically than this one. So how big is it compared to my Android phone, my Motorola? There it is. Uh, it's pretty tiny. It's pretty damn tiny. So yeah, the uh, the pictures do not lie. It's a one very small unit. Good stuff. To put it into perspective, down here is my 160 amp. AC PLS 4 coil welder, copper coils. That's about as good a welder as you can get in the AC line for light industrial home use. It's rated 160 amps, but that's actually not true. They're only really good for 130, 140 maximum off of the domestic supply. Uh, they're just playing with numbers here, but it is a very good welder and it will build up to 3.2 rods off of a 15 amp uh, circuit, no problem. You certainly can't weld off of a 10 amp circuit at that sort of size, but uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the old school. This is the used weld that I reviewed a while back, 250 amp inverter from Bankwood, terrific little welder, love it. And of course that's DC, and over here we have the new kit on the block, the small, or well, smallest one that they have at Bankwood, which is also DC, and looks to have a similar specifications to this one, although the duty cycle is not quite as good. Now you can buy really cheap ones of these, well actually at the same sort of money as the Banggood one except you don't get leads with a Banggood one, whereas the 
ones you get from auto shops and, and large suppliers, you get leads, but generally you'll find the duty cycle will be crap. Okay, you get leads, but you get a, a lesser capable machine. That's how they cover the costs, you know, that's the difference. So you're better off to get one with a good duty cycle. Use your existing leads or buy some leads of the right length and the right size and be set up perfectly rather than use the cruddy little leads that you get with most of these welders these days. Me, I use these big 400 amp Siemens cables. They're about, oh, I don't know, four metres long, five metres long. Fantastic. You don't get any drop, but voltage drop or amperage, amperage drop, I should say, with those. Anyway. Let's get on with it. Okay, as this doesn't have a plug, the first thing to do is fit a plug. And we can fire it up and see what sort of numbers it throws out on the display as far as what the actual maximum output is. I mean, 250 it says here. Maybe it does actually go to 250. You can't be sure with this stuff, and certainly the, um, the Banggood description is going to be a bit vague. I like the ventilation, it's, it's got good ventilation on the sides and the front and uh, I like the way they've colour coded the um, the, uh, the leads. Um, this is positive and this is negative. And here's the knob. Oh, it feels very similar to the knob on the use well. I suspect a lot of the circuitry on these is very very similar. Ooh, big heat sink in the back. It's a nice, yeah, it's quite a, quite a well-made thing. It's not cheap, sort of crappy quality. It's, even the plastic little feet seem quite, yeah, quite good. Interesting, very interesting. So in the bag we get a certificate. The Chinese love putting these certificates of quality in there, or production or whatever. I can't read Chinese, so I'm only guessing. And we've got two dense connectors and an Allen key. They're the same size dense as the use well, which I think are 9 mil, 9 or 10, I can't remember exactly, but they're the same, so the the, uh, the leads from the use well will go straight onto this. Now the, the manual, or Zogen, mm, it's looking very Chinesey here, mm, yes I see lots of uh, yes stuff that I can't read, um, do not lick the electrode, I suppose it says, and stuff like this, you know, all safety stuff. Um, okay, here's some performance figures. Hmm. Okay, so there's no mention here that it only goes to 200. I'd be surprised if it doesn't go there to the full 250. Yeah, electrical circuit shows what's in it if you're into that sort of thing. The usual schematic and uh, welding rod sizes, amperages. Um, I find with DC you have to crank them up a bit more than what they say. It's definitely uses a higher voltage than AC. I mean, I've been AC welding since I was in my 20s and uh, cut my teeth on AC. And yeah, I mean, AC welders will weld just as well as these things uh, for most welding. It's just that. A little bit trickier to, to learn to use, and I mean, I'd wager that probably most of the heavy welding going on around the world now is still being done by AC welders, although DC is, is slowly taking over. But certainly for light gauge work, these would be better. And the main thing, the big, the big, huge advantage with these is they use up to 50% less power, less load on the on your electrical system. Your, your workshop or household system than uh, than a uh, an uh, than an AC welder. DC this DC welders will quite happily weld off of a 10 amp system provided you don't go crazy. And the use well, uh, which I expect this will all also be very similar to, uh, will weld 3.2 mil rods off of a 10 amp system and only draw approximately 8.2 amps, according to my meter. Which is a big thing when you consider that if you were to do that with an AC welder, a 3.2 mil rod, that welder would be dragging nearly a full 15 amps out of your electrical system, and that uh, 
that circuit breaker is uh, right on the borderline. So these are hugely, hugely uh, less load on your household electrical system. And they're super compact and super light. And, huh, quite simply, they're amazing, really. But that's modern technology. It's totally different technology. You've got uh, modern day electronics versus old basic transformer technology, which is what uh, the old AC welders are. It can only be a good thing. But of course, there's lots of things in this that can go wrong. And, uh, you know, it's electronic circuitry with all sorts of capacitors and transistors and stuff. Whereas the old AC welders, they'll never basically die if you treat them, you know, properly. They just are unbreakable, literally. Okay, let's move on. So here it is, I've plugged it in. It's uh, turned on, and now it's just a matter of see what sort of numbers come up on the display. So we'll turn on the unit. So it's showing minimum of 22 amp. It's blowing air out the front. So it's sucking in from the back and blowing out the front the same as the, the used well. And it's also blowing out the sides. It's pretty good. It's got very good cooling. Whoa, look at that. She goes to a full 250. Ha ha ha. How would you be, eh? So this thing actually goes. I like the display, it's good. That's the trouble with the used well, that it's a bit vague because it's just got printed num numbers, a printed scale, and you're not really sure what actual, not the actual amperage really is, you know. It's uh, with a little display like this, that's terrific. Yeah, that's nice. Smooth. Pretty good. Pretty good. Wow, mm, I like it. I like it a lot. Maybe the Zojin will replace the used well. So how does this welder perform? Well, I've played around with it quite a bit, and it is, like all DC welders, very fussy about cleanliness, you know, doesn't like paint, rust. You know, AC is the king of burn, it will burn through anything, and that's what makes it so good if you're working in the field. You know what, you know, you're really working on <laughs> clean equipment, so yeah, AC is good for that. DC, everything's going to be a lot better. So, here we've got some brand new steel to test it out. Uh, this is 3.2 mil angle iron, and we've got some good quality um, CIG rods, top quality. So uh, one of these three point, uh, one of these 2.5 mil rods, I've crossed this at 140, which is what I would normally use with DC. And we'll see how it shapes up. Seem to work pretty good. That world looks alright. Could have been a little bit hotter, I reckon. Okay, we'll leave it at 140 and we'll use a SWEC. Chinese right on it, 2.5 mil, and see how that goes. These aren't as good a rod as I just used, but they're okay, they do the job. I've used them plenty of times. Weld, so you can see the difference. The 
the better quality rod is a lot better. I've got a pretty crappy weld then. I'll turn this over and we'll try the other side with the cheaper rod and just give it another, another pass. I think you'll find this welder is very, very rod sensitive. Okay, we're up to 145 now. Let's give this another go. That, that's too hot now. We'll try 135 for this rod. As you can see, it's welding, but it's got plenty of oomph, but it's quite fussy on the amps and the rod selection. Yeah, see, so not as good, nowhere near as good a weld as the, the top quality rod. The used weld is a lot more forgiving. You can run any sort of rubbish through it and it, and it welds really well, whereas, yeah, this one is Definitely picky. So all the rods I ran through it, it likes the Ferrocraft, CIG Ferrocraft. It's okay with Satincraft. It doesn't really like SWEC Chinese rods. And it's not crazy about Murex, although as I said, a lot of welders don't really like Murex. That's why that box hasn't been used, you know, it's just sitting there. I mean, good quality rods like anything from the BOC, BOC gas or CIG line should wield quite okay on this. But it doesn't really like uh, the cheaper rods. All right, I'll do one pass with the Ferrocraft again to show you it wasn't an illusion. And then we'll move on to 3.2. So this is Ferrocraft at 140 amps. Welded that, welded that perfectly, the slag just lifted off beautifully. So you can see the difference, you know, the weld quality. Ferrocraft is the rod that this welder wants. It has to be using something like that. And he, as, as I said, Satincraft was okay, but Ferrocraft, that's the rod to use with this welder. All right, now we'll do some five mil plate with 3.2 mil rods. Start off with a satin craft 3.2, then we'll go to a Murex, very old Murex. Um, I'm not sure what this rod is actually. And then we'll go to a WIA low hydrogen rod. We'll see how they go. And the welder was set at 160 amps initially. Strike the satin craft will go up a bit. So now we'll do 170 amps with a satin craft.
still welding like it's too cold. We'll finish off at 180. That's a lot better. So now it wants 180 amps to weld properly with that rod. See the world's actually not too bad. Ouch, it's hot. Now, so I think it actually even wants a bit more. Okay, we'll finish a bit of rod off at the end here at, at 185, and as I said, this is the satin craft. Tell straight away it's struck better and it welded better. So 185, that's pretty high for a 3.2. And we've got arc blow as well, so it doesn't like a satin craft in 3.2. So that's the issue with this welder, it's very rod, very touchy on rods. Very, very touchy. All right, we'll move on and try another rod. Absolutely horrible. Does not like Murex at all. It welded, but it was pretty hot. You can see these have a glass finish on the slag, a specialty rod. was 200, I reckon 195 would have been better, but it did well. Yeah, the world looks pretty good actually. It welded quite, oh, quite good. That's not bad. Fraction hot, I think. So I reckon 195. So you can see this thing is very, it's very touchy on the rods. I also think that meter is reading high because I don't really think that that was 200 amps. It didn't, it didn't throw off the heat like 200 amps. And I saw one of the other reviewers say the same thing. He thought the meter was out. He thought the meter was uh, reading higher than you were actually getting. And I th think that's some of your problem with this welder. The meter's not correct. It's very rod sensitive, as you saw. I mean, that's why we were getting trouble striking these rods, because the amps were really too low. So 200 amps is what it seems to need for 3.2 rods. The used welds are a lot easier to weld with than this than this welder. But as you saw, it can lay down a weld, you've just got to get the formula right. Well there you have it, it's a compact welder, but considering it's the same price virtually as the used welder, $169, they're both exactly the same price, within a dollar. I'd take the used welder over this thing any day of the week. It's got a used welder's got a twice as much way better duty cycle, although the duty cycle on this is, is pretty good and it never looked like getting warm at all, so I wouldn't worry about the duty cycle, but more importantly the used well is not as uh, rod um, selective, this thing is very 
selecting on rod types. Uh, the ferrocraft welded terrific. The satin craft welded okay. The SWEC were mm, fair. Uh, and the, uh, the Murex were, were terrible. Hates Murex rods. Uh, and the meter, yeah, the meter is not reliable. I mean, I don't think it is. It seems to be reading high. To me, I mean, 200 amps to do welding is, on 3.2 is way, way hot. Uh, and it didn't seem to be throwing the heat out at 160 amps that you would expect it to be throwing out. So yeah, I think the meter is off. Uh, even the Bengal specification, they say this thing peaks at 200, yet the clock's saying 250, so the clock could be 30 or even 40 amps out, I don't know. But it certainly, yeah, takes some getting used to this welder. So yep, it's compact, it's well made, but it's got its uh, idiosyncrasies and I'd certainly buy the used wheel over it any day of the week. The used wheel is a really, really good welder for the same money. Uh, and yeah, no comparison in my opinion. But there you have it, make up your own mind and I'll see you next time, cheers.